Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So last year at this time, I was doing a project called Junk, Use It or Lose It. And the idea was that I was going to use some of my junk for projects and anything that wasn't used, I would lose. I would get rid of. I was just fed up with all the junk I had lying around. Well, I think I did 10 weeks worth of projects and I'll put a link above in case you haven't seen those. And I said that I would do another kind of series this year. And all year I've been kind of putting it off and putting it off for the simple reason that uh, I've not been able to commit to as regular a time scale or schedule, I should say, for recording videos this year. And I thought, oh, I can't necessarily do 10 weeks in a row. But the other day I just thought, no, my junk's accumulating again. I did get rid of some junk last year, not enough, but junk's accumulating again. I need to start doing this and I'll just make videos as and when. So yeah, it's not necessarily going to be one every week, but look out for hashtag junk, use it or lose it. And hopefully there'll be some projects that are of interest to you. So one of the things I started to work on, oh, quite a number of weeks ago now. Uh, I just started to do some that I thought I could show you and I'll also show you how I'm doing them. But I have all these old business cards. Uh, these are my own ones. The information on them is out of date now. And I thought I could do something interesting with these. And I'm not saying that this is a unique idea. I'm sure there's others that have done that type of thing. But... Here's the type of thing I've been doing. So these were the kind of examples that I made. I don't know why, I always like to do things in threes. So I'll just quickly show you these. So these ones I've made as, you know, possibly little journaling cards. That was tea dyed paper or coffee dyed paper I put on the back. And I thought these would make nice little journaling cards. Uh, as I say, I made a whole series of them. These ones I had just gessoed first and I think it was a spray paint and just used various stamps. These ones I think I used painted papers and then just did a bit of stamping on them as well. Just spray paint on the back. Uh, again, well this had bits of book page and I've stamped on them and the back I've just done slightly differently. I think, yeah, that was just paint and, and stamping on those. As you see, three at a time. A uh, bit of book page with a stamped image. Kept the, the back plain. These ones actually gave me the idea for the prompt cards that I did for Marsha over at ZC Creations. So I'd done these and I thought, hmm, these would make quite good prompt cards for her. This one, much the same, but it's got a bit of kind of cheesecloth in the background. Similar again, the yellow had been ink that I'd uh, dribbled down it. Quite like this one. Big bit of cheesecloth on it. These two. So again, these were very much the ones that kind of gave me the ideas uh, for the prompt cards for Marsha. I think that was just Punchinella I'd used. I'd stamped the image onto the book page, kept the back plain because I thought that could be used as a journaling card. And these ones, I think, were just paint, quite highly textured and whatnot. Really didn't do anything more to these ones. Now you might say, what could these be used for? Well, you know, they're not ATC size. In fact, let me just tell you what size they are. So they are around three and a half inches by just under two inches, which is eight and What's that? Five, six, eight point seven centimeters by five centimeters. So smaller than ATCs, but you know I did think they could be, be used as journaling cards. They could be traded with people or even just sent out in happy mail. The other thing I thought about. Let me get a journal that I'm working on just now. Uh, 
So this is a journal I've been working on for a little while. I need to get it finished. You know, they'd even make quite a nice front piece on a journal. Or, you know, oops, still got this to sew together, but, you know, make nice little insets, journaling cards just to be added in. So, yeah. So, that's my project for this junk Use It or Lose It. Because the cards have got some personal information, I do have some that I've prepared just by putting gesso on. Obviously, any cards you're doing, unless you're going to show them publicly, then, you know, that's an unnecessary step. Because if you're painting, you can just paint over the card or stick paper down or whatever. And... Uh, yeah, the other thing I did do was to round the edges. Just felt that the edges looked nicer rounded. So all I'm going to do today is show you how I did a few of these and uh, hopefully it will give you perhaps some ideas. I think what I might do is do three kind of normal, so to speak, and I might actually make one into a little book. Again, it might be something that would be quite good to go into a, a journal, you know, in a, a pocket in a journal, if that could fold over somehow. Yeah, I'll have a look at how I might do that. So, the rest I might put on to fast forward and maybe do just do a bit of a voiceover. But, either way, see you on the other side. Okay, so I'm starting with my three-page mini journal or three-page journaling card. And what I'm doing is, to stick it together, is just using some masking tape. And I'm leaving a little bit of a space between the two cards, just to allow it to fold over. On the other side, I'll leave a slightly smaller gap, and that's just so it will sit right into the fold. I'm not putting that terribly well, but it will fold right in, and I can then fold the other page on top of it, so one doesn't impede the other. So just making sure that that tape is uh, really fully adhered. I perhaps should have used a little bit of glue with it as well. So here I am, I'm just using my small uh, jelly plate. And all I'm going to do is use this as a kind of fast way to create some background. So just three kind of green-blue colours here. Now it's not quite the size of these three together, but I can use the kind of paint that's left on after that first pull just to uh, cover the edges. So, once I've dried that, I then start to use some other paints and I will do a second layer. And all I'm trying to do here is to build up layers, build up colour, interest as a background on the card. So taking this piece of punchinella and just trying to get some marks on the paper. Now I thought at this stage that would just be too heavy to put on the card so I did a pull first off. But I think as it turned out it probably lifted just a bit too much paint. So I didn't get quite as much of the kind of pink and violet as I wanted. But nevertheless I have a piece of paper that will do for future collage. So taking this, I think it was a bronze colour. Just want to add a bit of that to it. And again, just putting down the punchinella to create some interest in the background. So all the time, just building up those layers. So felt that it needed something a bit brighter just to lift it again. And again, just keeping it simple and using this neon pink with a bit of the punchinella just to start to lift that. And I'm happier with the way this is starting to look. So for the inside, I wanted it not as bright because I envisage it would be used to journal in, to do some written journal in, although it could be used, you know, to paint as well. So I just used a sand colour and a bit of a kind of blue just to lift it a little bit. And quite liking the way that texture is. There's a slight dent in the card. I think that's probably where, when I had gessoed it before, I dried the gesso a bit too quick and it just lifted a little bit. But all it does is add interest to the card. So now what I'm trying to do is just take a little bit more paint 
just to try and bring out some of the colours that's actually on the front of the card. It was just too light in colour, but this way it just starts to reflect some of the colours on the front. And you can see how it folds up there as a little booklet. Now I'm just going to use the stamp in three places on the card. And I don't know, in my mind it's like having kind of bullet points, I guess. So I use these quite often on little journaling cards that I create. Just one of my favourite stamps. So just making sure that's dry and I'm now going to take this iridescent copper from Pabio. Again, one of my favourite paints and all I'm trying to do here is to create a bit of interest around the edge. So not trying to make this even in any way, just using my finger to put the paint round. And I also just want to disguise the tape where the paint didn't get right into it, uh, the first layer of paint, and uh, just setting that off almost to look like three separate pages. Now, because I was trying to wait for that outer edge to dry, I've put that off to the side for a while to let it dry. So I've now taken that piece of, it was tea or coffee stained paper that I then used to take the pool from the jelly plate and I'm just using that as a background for another card. So you could just use a glue stick to stick this down. I just happen to have this uh, map media to hand and decided to use it. Now, this is a problem when you use printer paper with a kind of wet glue. It can get a bit thin, a bit easy to tear. So, you know, it's got a tear in it, but it doesn't matter. There are ways to fix it. And I suddenly thought I might take this uh, dryer sheet save any dryer sheets that I use and I would just put this over it. I thought it would help disguise where the tear was. Just trying to scrunch that up a little bit just to give it a little bit of texture and I'm actually going over the top with another layer of the matte medium just to make sure that it's fully adhered. So quick dry, although it's not fully dry as yet, but now just going to even up the edges and going to round the corners. And for the back, I'm just going to use this piece of tea or coffee stained paper. I'm just going to attach that on. Now, because of the previous disaster, I'm actually just kind of smoothing it from the front, but I'm actually going to let it dry for a little while before I attempt to cut it. So I put that off to the side, just checking that again. It's still tacky, so I'm going to move on to another card. And with this one, I'm just going to use some pieces of book text that I have left over, and I'm just going to start to build these up onto the card. This paper isn't as fragile as the kind of printer paper, but you know, it's like any paper, you've got to be a little bit careful with it. and giving that a quick dry. And another dry it would seem. Okay, so now that I've done that, I go back to an earlier card, and I'm sorry this is slightly off the picture, but just rounding the edges. So 
So there we have the two cards. So I've cut away the excess in each case. And with this one, what I'm now going to do is to take a piece of Punchinella and I think it's the sepia ink pad I use. Okay, so I think what must have happened there is I thought I'd switched it off, but it was still running. And then when I thought I was switching it back on, I had switched it off. So apologies about that. But you'll see that I'd used a punchinella to create some background and then I tried to stamp on it. And unfortunately what it did was because the paper wasn't fully glued, it actually lifted some of the image some of the paper up so it tore it a little bit. So what I've decided to do now is just to cover that entire piece of card once more. So just out of screen a little bit here while I've glued that down. <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't do this terribly well, did I? I've somehow managed to uh, stop and start at the wrong times. But I just stamped a piece of paper first of all, and then I stuck it down. And this is me just drying it off. Okay, so all the time just checking on the other cards to see if they're dry. I have this card where I'm looking to stamp onto it with these three butterflies. So what I'll look for now is the acrylic block. And just fitting those into place. And what I'm going to do, just checking the sizing, and what I'll do is to use some clear ink, the embossing ink, and I will also apply some black emboss embossing powder. Loving the way that the drop paper starting to look, and I can see myself using that for lots of other things, but for some reason I keep going out of screen today and I can only apologise. So I'm now back to this card and I have decided to use some various colours on it. I had to keep putting the cards to the side while they dried. So, a disaster filming today, but out of picture I had stamped this card and I'll explain a bit more when I show you the finished items. So, apologies for the problems with filming. Okay, so I think that's me for this video. I was going to say for this project, but actually I've got hundreds more of those cards to do and uh, it's the sort of thing that it's quite nice just to do when you know, you're not feeling like doing anything too much, just getting out a few cards, sticking down some bits and, of paper and whatnot. So, a couple of mini disasters along the way, but managed to, to retrieve them. This card, I think I just hadn't let it dry enough, and also when I was stamping on it, the surface was just too uneven to uh, stamp on. But, you know, you, you work with what you've got and just try and make it better. I think I really just wasn't giving things time enough to dry but you know I like the way this one turned out I like the colours to me it has that kind of industrial feel I'm starting a, a kind of steampunk junk journal uh, steampunk junk journal try saying that quick three times and you know so I could see this sitting in there as a journaling card or some sort of embellishment or something this one I was smoothing out the paper and you would see I, I tore it but you know I then used that dryer sheet and it actually ended up giving it I think quite a nice background and I like the the three butterflies done with the embossing embossing ink this one a little bit blurry but you know I'm quite happy with it and space to journal on the back. And I do like my little booklet. Uh, this still isn't fully dry. When you put on paint thick like this, 
when you go to dry it with the heat gun, what it does is it really just dries the kind of outer edge, so it creates a skin and it's still wet underneath, so yeah, I think it's getting there, but it probably needs overnight to dry fully. And I just added a bit more pink there because I felt it was a bit insipid compared to the outside, but again, you know, I would envisage this within a journal, perhaps within a pocket in a journal, I'm just going to be careful closing this. Uh, because the paint isn't dry, but you know, that could sit within a pocket in a journal, a little old journal or journaling card within a journal. So, I, I did notice too with the this other journal that I'm in the process of making, I think this background isn't finished, but you know, I think that was also a card that uh, I've used here, just adding layers on layers on layers, and you'll see I've sewn through this, through the card, and that's the other thing that I could do in this, is to sew around some of them. I've got some like that, but they're already in other journals, so yeah. So that's it. Lots more of these cards to do. I hope you've enjoyed this. Obviously, if you don't have business cards, then you could just use cardstock, cereal boxes, other food boxes, just cut them up doesn't have to be this size, it just happens to be the size of the business cards that I've got. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was a nice way to, to use them up. Little mini works of art, a little bit like an ATC, but smaller. Swap these with people, send them out as happy mail, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I'll just mention I've started another little series uh, just recently called, what did I call it? Art Journaling Unplugged. And all I'm doing in, in those videos, I've only put the one up but hopefully more soon, is I'm really just sitting down with my art journal and just see what comes. And it could be any one of a number of art journals. I just thought sometimes I'll, I'll sit and do stuff in my journal. I don't necessarily film it. Uh, filming, I would normally try and have a kind of plan for something, not always, but, but sometimes, but you know, when I'm just sitting journaling myself, I tend not to, and I thought, you know, if I'm able to, why not just switch on the camera, and it may or may not be of something that is of interest to you, but I hope it is. The other thing I must say, and, and sorry, I always forget to, to do this, many apologies, recently reached 2,000 subscribers, and, uh, you know, just stunned, overwhelmed at that and, uh, you know, continue to be... I, I so appreciate you watching, you giving the thumbs up and you leaving kind comments. I, I really do appreciate that. <coughs> Excuse me. That's not the first of the winter colds coming on. So I just want to say a very big thank you to, to everyone that's subbed, everyone who watches, who comments, gives a thumbs up and and all of that. I haven't done a, a 2000 subby giveaway. I will do something in the not too distant. It may be at the turn of the year though, just because I've, I've got an awful lot of different things on at the moment, not all art related, but, you know, time just seems to to get taken up with other things. So that again is one of the reasons why I decided not to, or haven't until now started this new series of junk, use it or lose it. But yeah, hopefully get back into the swing of these kind of projects and other projects. So sorry, that's a bit of a ramble, but there we go. So many thanks for watching. If you like it, please do give it the thumbs up. Please support subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah as I say love your comments and very much appreciate them so thanks very much bye for now